Hello, thank you so much for joining the Falling for Learning podcast. I am T.D. Flanau, a National Board Certified Educator and Parent who is on a mission to ensure that parents have the strategies, resources, and skills needed to make sure that they know how to get their kids on track for learning and to stay on track for success. That brings us to our podcast, Falling for Learning, which is in reference to helping our students to fall in love with aspects of learning so that they were not making them learn or making them practice, but that they have an internal desire to do the work that is going to help them succeed in academics, but also in career and in life in general, meaning as they're conducting business or they are business leaders or entrepreneurs. Hi, um, we're so glad today to meet with Sheila Green. Uh, she is the CEO of Reach One and Teach One. Yes. And so today she's going to tell you about her products and services, and she's going to tell, tell us a little bit about her organization and herself. So go okay. ahead. Okay, good morning. Thank you for having me. My name is Sheila Green. A um, little bit about my background, I've been teaching for 23 years. Um, the reason why I created my nonprofit, actually, I started during the pandemic. Um, for Reach One and Teach One Inc. is because I noticed that there was a growing need for um, our high school students using substance abuse. And I noticed that um, quite a few of my students was coming to school high. So I figured that was a need to touch and educate our parents as well as our students. Um, because, you know, marijuana is now legalized and they feel like, oh, we could just come and it's no consequences and stuff mm -hmm. but yeah it's very important that they're aware of what's the long-term effect at the end wonderful okay so reach one teach reach one and teach one started during the pandemic yes and um so what type of service so we know that you're reaching out to those kids that are might be um involved in substance abuse but what does your organization do with them or, or for them so um, this last past school year, um, we was at Augusta Hawkins and we provided um, mentoring um, counseling for our youth. And I had a caseload of 26 um, with the BSAP program and we met twice a week. So I met between, um, it was ninth all the way to 12th grade. And I think the caseload for 12th, I had five students. Um, ninth, it was probably like nine and then like seven or six ravaging. But the total caseload was 26 students that I mentored this year at Augusta Hawkins. Um, and, you know, not to go in detail, but we had circles, um, which is like intervention circles and stuff. Um, I know one thing that I would like to share that a lot of the students are not aware. Um, and also when I did the BSAP family reunion, um, students are not aware that once they use vaping, that the alarm system go off and a lot of principal came up to me and schools have to pay for that. So I, and it was like, oh, really? And it was so it funny. The first day that I started, the alarm system went off and the young ladies and I was in a meeting with the Miss Fordham, which is the principal of Augusta Hawkins. Okay. Um, they, they just wasn't aware. And it was like, you know, I'm sorry. And it's just little things like that, just bringing awareness to our um, students. Okay. All right. So thank you. That's really important for students yes, to yes. know the impact they're having on the others. Impact. Um, so I wanted to back up a little bit because you did okay. bring up BSAP. And just to let you know again about our audience, we have parents from all over the United States oh. and, and even the world. And so we want to let you um, just tell us what BSAP is, because I know your um, program works in uh in collaboration with BSAP. So tell us what BSAP is and then and then that'll give us um, a better picture for those of us who are not familiar. <laughs> okay. So um, BSAP is a Black student. Um, it's a program that's designed to help um, our minority students. That's in um, most of them like in low poverty school areas that okay. um, maybe a lot of students don't want to go to college, um, grades are below average. Um, just doesn't have the resource. And so what they did, they put these special programs in 
um, minority school areas to help do it this regular like principals, the deans and stuff they can't get. So I'm just gonna use Augusta Hawkins. So for instance, they probably had like eight mentoring programs for this school year. And each one of us touched different areas mm -hmm. to help with the student achievement. And also to improve test scores and grades um, to make sure that the students was graduating on time. So we right. were very involved with that. And so it's more like of a supporting service outside resource to support the schools. Yeah, so the Black Student Achievement Plan with mm -hmm. um, is uh, specific to the Los Angeles Unified School District. You work as a servicer to help uh, different areas. So there's different areas that students may need extra support. And in your particular area, they might be involved with substance abuse. And so you work providing services for them, contracted with the district to help support um, the group of students. Um, and with, through the Black Student Achievement Plan. So, yes, yes wonderful. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. So uh, what I also wanted to um, ask you about is, you know, how did you, you were saying that you were, you've been a teacher or educator for 23 years. So what brought you into education as a child um, that really uh, sparked interest for you or as a young adult, um, what were some of those sparks for you that really drew you in? So for me, actually, a um, little background with that, I graduated from Dorsey High School. So I am a, you know, LA Unified School <laughs> attendee. So um, I graduated from Cal State Dominguez with my undergrad in HR. And so at that time, um, I graduated in 98. Um, I applied for BET and I was actually in marketing. So it was kind of crazy. And then they sold the company. It was going through a transition. Then my counselor at Cal State Dominguez was like, well, you should go into teaching. And it was at that time, it was called ROP for Regional Occupational Program to teach high school students how to apply for jobs. Because my strong background was in HR. Okay. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, that might be good because I really had a passion for it. So I got into that. And then um, ROP changed into CT, which is uh, career technical education for um, our students. And so that changed over the years. So we got more into instead of hands-on, more in theory where um, teaching students how to run their own business and stuff, um, more entrepreneur, um, like culinary arts, uh, marketing, digital. So mm, they got into awesome. more fields like that when they um, created CTE and it was eight pathways for that. So um, had a passion, very strong passion. And as you know, when the pandemic happened and things were changing with our students, um, you know, going into that area and I saw that we, we really didn't have the support and the students, um, I don't wanna say that, how can I put it in proper terms? If, if a student came to school under the substance, we, we just didn't have the resource. And then at that time they were trying to suspend them. Then they changed it because we defunded the police. So we just didn't have it. And then we used to have like a probation officer on site. They okay. you know, got rid of that program. So it was like, okay, what do we do? What do we do? We just can't leave the kids there. So we do need to have that support staff. So I just tried to revamp and that's where my passion. So I went back and got my counseling in um, substance abuse a lot you know I still have my teacher credential and stuff like that so I just like I'm gonna help these kids <laughs> awesome and it's so great when people really listen to that calling and really uh, create programs and yeah. resources for people um so yeah I just really want to mark what you're saying about you know there are some changes going on where we were before criminalizing children yes they were involved in uh drugs, substance, substance abuse, and different things of that nature. Hello, parents. Join us for our back to school workshop. We will help you address all the chaos that a new school year could bring. Missing homework, forgotten projects, unexpected school holidays, low grades, poor behavior reports, Instead, you can start the school year relaxed and empowered. Join us for three Saturdays from 12 to 1 p.m., August 26th, September 2nd, and September 9th on Facebook Live.
We will help you make plans to improve attendance, organize the kids, learn to work with teachers and improve learning and behavior. Reset your children's relationship to school and learning. Only $270, you can scan the QR code to join or go to fallinginlovewithlearning.com to register. See you there. There was a shift. They defunded the Los Angeles Unified School Police. Yes, yes. And now we are trying to educate the children, give them the services and treatment that they need instead of putting them in the justice system. So I, I just really feel like it really needs to be marked that you are a champion of this cause because... You know, we know that there was a whole generation that really suffered because they were criminalized for being addicted. And now the public and social viewpoints of that have changed to think about we need treatment. It's a disease. It's a it's an illness. And so um, really, I commend you for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. (laughs) So I really wanted to ask you about, you know, your program and what's your ultimate goal for it. And for example, if you look ahead for five years, where kind of goals do you want or what kind of impact do you want your program to have by that time? Okay. So my program, which I'm actually working with one of the mentors right now, my ultimate goal is 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 to have a counselor at each site, at least with um I mean, ultimate goals, of course, I'm not going to have each counselor in all of LA Unify, but let's say I at least have 25 counselors in a school. And that's my ultimate goal within the next five years, that you definitely need a substance abuse counselor on each site. So for the mentoring, just to know, um, and like I said, there's, you know, um, things that I can't really say, but just my first week at Augusta Hawkins, it was like I was setting up the circle and kids came in right then and there. And you'll you'll be surprised. Sometimes they just need somebody to listen to and cry out, you know, just, it's really sad, but. Yeah, again, like noticing that, you know, with the pandemic and all of these uh, social emotional factors, that are negatively impacting kids. Sometimes they do s- turn to substance. Yes. Being a place for them to go, having a counselor, having a circle. They have other ways to channel those emotions and those needs. And yes. so it's great for you standing in the gap there. So yes, yes. Wonderful. So we want to, um, because our audience is uh, <laughs> parents, Okay. Right. Yes. So we, yes. we always, always want to think about like what message might you have for parents as they're guiding their children through learning and growing? Mm-hmm. What kind of message do you have for them? Well, the message that I have for parents, they have to be educated and be aware um, and not be in denial um, about their children. Um, and I'll give you an example like that. Um, we know that I'm going to say casually, students say, oh, marijuana is just a casual. Yeah, I smoke a little marijuana or I bathe and they think it's nothing wrong. And the parents like, oh, no, you know, not my student, not my child. And they need to be aware of the different signs, because like I explained to them, it's not just them smoking the marijuana. One of it's laced with something. And we and we right before I started, they had a um, in a middle school where four kids overdose mm-hmm. and that was in April. So it was like, we, we have to be educated when it comes to that because you can't trust. I don't know if I could say this on our podcast. You, you can't trust the dope man because you just don't know. You just mm-hmm. don't, know. you don't know Absolutely. what that person got that product from. You don't know what's in that product. Anything can happen. Mm-hmm. you know you you sometimes you just got to be careful you just never know and these are young kids yeah and we're talking from middle school that's um getting high absolutely yeah so okay. you just don't know and parents 
they have to be involved um, talking to the kids. A lot of them, you know, parents are not involved. Mm-hmm. The parents are not there. And I get it. We have to work. We, you know, three jobs or maybe their background for where they came from. You got grandparents raising this generation mm-hmm. and, you know, they're elderly, so they may not have the knowledge of what's going on. So yeah. we just have to educate ourselves and have different um, parent network. But how the question that we were struggling with the school year, how do we get the parents involved? More Absolutely. Involved. Yeah, and that's, that's what why I have that. On. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're working on. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're so glad you came on to the podcast because this is for parents yes. to be aware, right? Um, and I, we really saw the need for parents to be involved pre-K through 12, right? Yes. Uh, yes. We do see a lot of parents that are involved in elementary school, and we'll see that dropping off precipitously in middle school, high school. Yes. And even though there's different needs, right? There are needs, right? Uh, that <laughs> and, and parents really need to know. And I'm glad so much to have you know, different people come on, such as yourself, to give us a new aspect and a new viewpoint. So drug abuse or substance abuse, you need to be aware of the signs. Like, you do. And let them know, like, now there are certain drugs on the market that it's, a, you know, it's a fatal, it's fatal, you know, yes. you take it one time and there's no coming back from it, you're done. And um, so it, it can't just be like, oh, it's just a little bit of this or a little bit of that and think it's just um, casual because you could be making a fatal error by using whatever particular drug. Uh, So that's something that maybe it's not on parents' radar. And it's so hard for us as parents to think about our kids in that way. Like not, yeah, definitely not, not my child, but we have to be clear, you know, and pay attention to those signs. And that's what we want to talk about really like what signs might I be looking for as a parent um, Mm -hmm. that I maybe wouldn't be aware of, or maybe I'll just brush aside, like, you know, he's just moody or whatever it is. So what might we be looking for? Um, What they really need to look for is the grace. Um, You you could tell I, one of the caseload, I was a young lady. She was an A student um, and her drug of choice was alcohol. And the school called up there several times where the paramedic had to come because, you know, once again, it was out of their um, tactic what they could do, but the paramedic needed to get involved. And I met with this young lady uh, once a week, and um, it was a very hard breakthrough to get through, but grades dropped, just she didn't care. And, and one of it had to do with depression, family mm. environment. Um, she had broke up with a young boy. Um, yeah. You know, they had ended up kicking him out because he was like a bad influence in the school. Um, and I, we, we tried and tried and tried. I mean, this girl came for, I think she had like a 3.8 and she was down like a one point something. Mm, so it's great. We, we have to stay and parents like, oh, you know, you don't know, but we know when, when grades come out, you have to stay involved. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to the last minute for that. Yeah. Okay. And then our, what about like uh, physical signs or uh, other, other. Uh, I notice yeah. appearance is very important. The way they dress, um, hygiene, you could tell when somebody um, just not caring about their self-esteem or appearance and stuff. Yeah. So that's another big sign to look for. Okay. Behavior, the crowd that they hang around. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Loneliness. You know, not being active with other kids and stuff. That's another big sign. Okay. Yeah. So several signs that's there that you like, okay, this this is not normal. Okay. A lot of shutdown emotions. (laughs) Say that last part again. I said it's a lot of shutdown emotions. You could tell once you meet with the student. So the kids just kind of dial out. They dial out, shut down. Yes. Okay. All right. So if schools or families want to find you, so let me ask, just to be clear, if I'm a parent, will uh, like, can I use your services or I have to access your services through the school? No, you could actually use my service. Um, like I said, what we're doing right now, um, and I'm working with another mentor, um, 
to, so I'm looking at Crenshaw High, Dorsey, to stay in that demographic South area. Um, my website is on, I don't, I don't know if you have the website, but it's um, reach one, teach one, two, zero, two, two. Dot org, And then it tells you about the program. So the reason why we're going into the schools, because it's a curriculum base that we try to focus on, but I do do counseling for the students if the parents need help or referrals. Yes. Okay, excellent. So we are, because I'm a nonprofit, so we are there. So I okay. have had parents reach out to me and ask for different referral needs. So can you tell us that website again? And yes. we'll make sure we put a link as well. Okay, so it's reach one teach one two zero two two dot org and that's the number one reach that's the number, the number one. one and the number one and then teach two, the number zero. one yes. at so reach the number one teach the number one, one uh two zero two two dot org <laughs> okay and we'll make sure we put it in the bio yes. uh we really appreciate you so much for coming thank you so for, much yes for you um really responding to that calling uh, to stand in the gap where, you know, the services have changed or they've, you know, shifted, but then there was no response, right? Yeah, uh, and so we're definitely. really glad that you came up with the program to support kids and parents. We really have to be aware of our kids. We yeah. can't kid ourselves that it's not our kid. We have to look for those warning signs. Yes. Um, you're saying the kids will be dialing out, like they yes. just are really not caring about uh, grades so their grades may drop a lot where they before were excelling they have a new group of friends maybe um, yes. they are really isolating themselves they have depression um, and so really pay attention and really stay involved really right yes, and we will definitely yes. be reinforcing that message in all of our different programmings our every episode just thinking about how we need to stay involved with our kids not just academically, but emotionally checking in with them, having conversations with our children. And again, thank you so much. Ms. Thank Green, you so much for, for um, sharing, taking time to share with us today. Yes, it was a pleasure. Is there, yes. Is there anything you want to add or anything? Like I'm just that? looking forward for the school year to reach out to other schools and providing the service there. Excellent. Yeah. So if you have a, if you want, if you need uh, help or if you're an educator um, a lot of parents are educators as well um, and you want them at, at your school site please reach out Saturdays at 5 p.m. is when we drop our new episodes please listen in every week for those strategies and tips to keep you and the next generation on track for success you can also find us on YouTube by going to youtube.com slash at fall for learning. Again, that's youtube.com at fall, the number four learning. We really appreciate you. And we are here on a mission to make sure that that next generation is on track for success and on track for learning. Thanks again. I'm TD Flynn. Have a wonderful week.